Good morning, Flosstube. This is Robin. Welcome to my channel. I'm Lady Robins, both here and on Instagram. So you can follow me two places if you're at all interested. Today is the 16th of February, and this is my Flosstube number 64. So thrilled that you're you're joining me today. Happy to have you back. I am trying to fix the lighting problem on my videos. It's ridiculous. You, If you've watched me, you know that my lighting flares and so I have a ring light and I'm going to try to keep my head tilted down so you don't see the um, the circle in in reflecting in my glasses. We'll hope, we'll hope that helps. I am just having a dickens of a time figuring this whole lighting thing out. But such such is the life of a YouTuber, right? I'm not much of a YouTuber. Anyway, for those that are new here, thank you for stopping into my channel and seeing what I'm up to. This is a channel, it's a floss tube channel, so I, I just talk about stitching. I talk about my cross stitch. For my returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate you. I appreciate all of you, new and old subscribers alike. I I have the best time sitting here in my craft room talking to you about my stitching. Speaking of stitching, I got more stitching done this week than I thought I would, so I'm happy to update you on the progress of my pieces and how I'm doing. I started two new things this week, so we can talk about new starts. And yeah, let's let's just jump into it. I, of course, if you've been here, always share a mug of the day. I am sharing this one. It is San Antonio. These are the Starbucks You Are Here mugs that are out of print, but I dearly love them. And I couldn't find, I couldn't find my Texas mug because I'm thinking of all you people in Texas with your snow and your ice and your rolling blackouts. I am really thinking good thoughts for you guys. That is a no fun situation. We did have snow here in the Seattle area. And depending on where you measured in my yard, I either got 10 or 12 inches. <laughs> so I'm, I'm calling it, I'm calling it 11 inches of snow. It was, it was beautiful. It was pretty much enforced stitching time because I'm not driving in that nonsense. Nope, not me. I'm a, I'm a snow chicken. I'm not doing that. So I had pretty much two days at home where it was just too snowy to go outside for my comfort, so I stayed home and stitched. And speaking of stitching, what did I stitch on? Let's find out. Well, one of the things I did that was that is stitching related is I decided it was time to FFO something. So I have an FFO to show you. If you're new to floss tube, Acronyms are our jam. We love them. FFO stands for a fully finished object. So that's something that you've completed the stitching on and now you're turning it into a picture, a pillow, you know, a decor piece, however, however you want to finish it. That's an FFO. I went for a pillow. So I finally FFO'd my Jeanette Douglas Cozy Into Winter piece. And it's got all those yummy specialty stitches. I adore this. She has one for every season and I can hardly wait to start on another one. And here's my backing fabric. I like the look of a solid, a solid back. So I go crazy. What? And so I leave, I leave, you know, an inch or so open, maybe two inches open on the bottom. That's where I, I turn it out. And then I, you know, put the stuffing into it and then I whip stitch it closed. And then, um, this was a kit that I purchased and it actually came with the lady dot chenille trim. So yeah, that's what I did. I watched Vonna Pfeiffer's, um, what do they call it? Finishing school tutorials. So I watched the one, the one about making pillows. And one of the things that I learned 
is Vana in that tutorial she puts um, interfacing on both her backing fabric and her cross stitch piece perfect totally fine I love that because then you're if you use I used fiber fill for um, the stuffing on my pillow and then all the little pieces don't you know travel through and you don't have all these these little hairs it looks like hairs sticking through your fabric so that worked out perfectly the problem for me was once I got to whip stitching this closed and sewing the uh, chenille trim all the way around was because I put the um, put the fusible interfacing all the way to the edge of the piece right and then and then I trimmed it to size when I got to stitching hand stitching it was really hard to pull my needle through this so you know two pieces of interfacing the cross stitch fabric and then your backing fabric the tips of my fingers hurt so bad from pulling so hard to get that needle through I think what I'm gonna try to do next time because of course there'll be a next time is maybe I will not put the interfacing all the way to the edge maybe leave myself a little quarter inch seam allowance and then hopefully when I'm doing my whip stitching and I'm putting my my trim on my piece I won't be tugging through um, that interfacing which is really really stiff and really tough to sew through so I learned something don't interface it all the way to the edge if you're gonna sew trim on it so there you go there's a pro tip for you <laughs> not that I'm a pro but that's what I learned it that was really that was really difficult to do but despite it being difficult to do I am thrilled with how my finished piece turned out and my husband said well are you gonna put a hanger on that so it's a Christmas ornament for the tree and I thought this thing is big enough I can just poke it in the branches if I want to so I am not gonna add a hanger besides if I change my mind and I want this to become you know a, a, a decor piece put it in a you know I have a nice bread bowl something like that I won't have a hanger hanging often so that's that's my idea on not putting the hanger on it but Mr. Lady Robbins, Rob, <laughs> that's my husband's first name, Rob, he, he thought this looked really great and I knew too, I'm really thrilled with it. And I keep holding it up, I just want this to be my screen grab. Come on, come on YouTube, screen grab. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's what I did on Sunday and Monday. That's what I worked on. It it took me a while. I'm really slow with this finishing stuff. I second and triple guess myself on every step. Then I go to the YouTube and I pull up tutorials and I watch everybody under the sun that's ever FFO anything just to make sure I'm doing it right. I'm I'm a very timid finisher, but I think I think it turned out okay. So enough about my FFO, which as you can tell, I'm super stoked about. Okay. What else did I work on? So besides the FFO, my fully finished objects, I worked on some whips. I have um, the two whips that were called for Whip Go. And Whip, in case you're new, work in progress. Whip Go is a Facebook group created by Jessie Marie um, and her YouTube handle. And I think also her Instagram handle, I could be wrong about Instagram, but it, but for sure her YouTube handle is Jessie Marie Does Stuff. And she came up with the idea of putting your pieces onto a little bingo type board. And the bingo numbers that were called this week uh, or this month are 4 and 20. Sing the song with me, right? 4 and 20 blackbirds. And so the Whipco pieces that I'm working on are playing with jacks and harbor haven so i got some progress on both of those to show you let me grab them here and i started on harbor haven 
the second scene. It's a 12 scene series. Now you can stitch them individually if you want, but I want them. I want all 12. I want a great big, huge, long thing. And I'm going to hang it behind my Davenport when I'm done in the living room. And so this is where I got. I finished on scene two, the other half of the tree, and I'm just starting to put in the leaves. And so I am thrilled with how this is stitching up. This is a fun stitch because there are there are big blocks of colors. As you can see, it stitches up, I'm not gonna say quickly, but it stitches up easily because you are not changing colors all that often. There's not a lot of confetti. Now, of course, these, these little things here are a little more confetti filled, but yeah, you, can, you can do a little confetti in your life, right? So this is, um, this is my whip number, eh, it doesn't matter if it's 4 or 20. Anyway, this is, this is the one that I'm concentrating on for this week. My goal for whip go is to stitch on this five days this month. Already I've stitched on it four days, which means I got lots of time left in the month. If I want to add a couple extra days, I can totally do that. And I might because like I said, this for me, this is a fun, fun stitch. So there's my first whip go piece that I'm working on this month. And then the other one, pardon me, as I reach for, where'd it go? Oh, here it is. <laughs> I couldn't see it down in the bottom of my bag. Um, I am working on playing with Jax, which is this fantastic chart by the Cricut Collection. And I am getting, I am getting the last pumpkin filled in. So I went, I went to town on working on that um, last kind of um, black and white pumpkin. So I am loving it. And I have stitched, I think, three days on this one this month. So I still have two more days to go. I'm sure I will get the um, last pumpkin filled in. And then I just have to do the bottom shelf. And I've decided on, on here, we talked about this last week, but I've definitely decided I am not going to, there's, leaves that hang down. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do a row of acorns. I'm going to do five acorns across the bottom to finish off my piece. I think that's going to look really nice. And yeah, that's, that's what I've decided. I think that will be super, super fun to do. And the nice thing about this last pumpkin that I'm doing, suspense, not just kidding. Is it, is the, is the interior is all filling. It's one color at this point, so that will stitch also up really quickly. I am, I'm really psyched on my progress on playing with Jax. So that was the second Whip Go piece that I worked on for this week. And, all right. The other thing that um, that I stitched on, it wasn't on my whip go board, I just wanted to, is my a waffle, a waffle lot sow. And that was, yeah, that's that's by um, Heart and Hand, Kathy Hoverman, and this came in my Black Needle Society Date With Your Stitching Box. And Michelle, uh, Bendy Stitchy and I are hosting a sow on that. Feel free to jump in if you've got the pattern. And I think that will be released eventually. Um, Kathy usually does that. So here is where I got to on my waffle lot piece. So this week I got the, the waffle banner and then that entire heart put in. And this piece is you know, to kind of make a little, to make, what do they call it? Um, a mattress finish. I think that's what they, I think that's what they call it. So there's, you know, this is the, this is obviously, this is the front, this is the back, and then there's a band that goes all the way around. And 
I was I was thinking, oh, I'm I'm just gonna do the front, and I want it up for Valentine's Day, and that didn't happen. And I'm thinking, I've never completed anything with kind of a dimensional finish like the um, the mattress finish or like a Biscornu. I mean, you know, obviously I've done pillows, but I've never done anything outside of the pillow realm. So I thought this would be a really fun um, challenge for me. So I'm gonna stitch the whole thing. I'm gonna do, do the band, I'm gonna do the back, and she's got a tutorial is what I'm hearing up on her blog that talks about how to how to finish it off. So I am I'm all in. I'm going to I'm going to do the whole I'm going to do the whole thing. So it won't be done for this Valentine's Day because today's the 16th. <laughs> I I missed it. <laughs> but I'm going to keep I'm going to keep working on this all year long so I can get that ready for next year. I'm I'm excited to to give something new a try. So that is the the third whip that I worked on this week. And then after after that, like I said, I've got new starts. I keep seeing I keep seeing that ring in my glasses, you guys. So uh, it's I'm finding it slightly distracting. Let me know in the comments if you think the ring and reflection in my glasses is worth not having the light flaring as much. Let me know. I really, I really want your help on this because I, I know the flares are really distracting. And so I want to solve this problem and I'm no expert, like I've said. So any help and advice you have, I am all here for. And I'm, I'm not kidding. Don't, don't hesitate to tell me, Robin, you should do X, Y, and Z. I'm here for it. I'm down for your advice. And speaking of comments, I have not had a chance to respond to last week's comments. In fact, I'm not even sure I've read all of them yet. So I apologize for that. A um, couple things happened this week. I can discuss it at the end of the video and just kind of threw me off my game ever so slightly. Uh, snow. <laughs> there were a couple other things. So Anyway, just just forgive me for that. Give me a little grace. I will I will try to get get to those comments and read through them this week and respond back to y'all because I like to do that. I really I love when y'all comment. That just makes my day. Okay, so what were my new starts? I bet you know. You should know if you're a, if you're a returning subscriber, right? You should know. I started the Stitching Book Club Sense and Sensibility Sal. Woohoo! Loving it. Love the pattern. My printer is running out of blue, so I printed the pattern and it looks ridiculous because the blue in my printer has almost given up the ghost. But anyway, that just gives you a hint on that. Now, I am stitching it on. A blue fabric from Brandy at Be Stitch Me. I believe this is called Slate. Now, I'm having a problem. And Kristen, the genius behind the Stitching Book Club, said, you might have a problem stitching on a blue fabric with your white showing up. She had kind of alluded to that and she did sell kits. I wasn't lucky enough to get a kit, so that's okay. No big deal. I figured, well, blue is blue, right? <laughs> my white stitches are oops let's see if we can get are not showing on this fabric darn right and this is my second attempt this isn't even the called for DMC she called for the original DMC white the the blanc 000 this is 3865. So this fabric is not really showing up my white stitching, which is a majority of the pattern here. The first, the first three flowers 
have white on them. So this is a bit of a problem. And I have a solution. Kristen was really kind and she created two color charts for this for this pattern. One where you stitch it on a blue background fabric and one where you stitch it on white. And so I saw um, someone on Instagram a couple of days ago and they were they're stitching it on blue fabric. However, for some for the for the big flower in the middle, like I said, my printer is kind of giving up the ghost, but hopefully you can you can kind of get an idea, right? She stitched that big center flower with the white fabric conversion and it's it's a it's a big beautiful blue flower. I'm going to I'm going to totally follow that brilliant person's lead and I'm going to do that with mine because this is going to look like nothing. Don't you agree? I mean, can you see that? I can't see that and I'm sitting right next to it. And I I went I went and did a stash dive. I got Weeks grit and somebody's chalk, and then I was looking at my color in cottons. I I don't know this fabric, which is beautiful, and I really want to use it. I don't think is going to lend itself well um, to big blocks of white stitching. I think it will probably be okay for a little highlights here and there. That's my guess. I don't know yet, but I'm going to, I'm going to pick out, I'm going to frog <laughs> all those white stitches and I'm going to do that white conversion for that big flower in the middle. And then I'm going to go from there and see, see what I can see, see what happens. But yeah, I'm not, um, so I'm not happy with my progress on Sense and Sensibility. It's, it's a bit of a struggle. I'm kind of on the struggle bus with this one, but I want to do it. I want it, I want it hanging up there somewhere. So I'm going to restart it. I'm going to, I'm going to do the white fabric conversion for that big center flower. And then I'm going to see what happens. So hopefully, hopefully good things will happen. That's what I'm hoping. Okay. So that was my, that was my first or no. Yeah. That was my first start last week. And then for my second start, I started my Owl Forest kit. Sorry, I'm tucking things back in my bag so that I don't have missing pieces. Okay, so my second start, I started yesterday. I started my Owl Forest Hyperborea kit. I'm going to do the whole thing. I am here for the whole thing. It's going to take me a million years. I'm down for it. It's going to be fantastic. So I had a, a bit of a start and you guys gasp along with me. <gasps> I put it on a Q-snap. <laughs> so there is my start. The center of the pattern is, is the owl. It's kind of down by where the feet of the owl would be. So that's what you're seeing there. Kind of the the bottom bit of the owl, and I'm working my way up. It says it, it said start your fabric in you know start your piece in the center of the fabric, and usually I'm a top left starter. Since I didn't cut the fabric, I did measure. It's going to fit on it, but the margins are a little snug. I thought I'm just going to start in the center, and then I can worry about you know the finishing you know, once I'm done, it'll, it'll be fine. It'll be perfect. It'll be fine. So there is my start on Owl Forest Embroideries Hyperborea kit. This was my Christmas present from my husband. I was, I was like, I, I, I got to stitch that. I need that in my life. So he, he's good with helping me keep the cross stitch love going on. So I, I got to start. It wasn't much, but it's better than nothing, right? I have, I have a huge pile of something on my desk, which is my haul for the week. Because we were going to be snowed in, right? I, I had to, 
I had to get floss for a possible third start this weekend, which I did not get to, which is which I'm okay with because these other two starts, there there was enough you know drama with sense and sensibility that I did not have it in me for another new start. But what I did was I went to my local Joann's because I don't know about you, it does not matter. I don't know what happened. Something happened in the middle of um, filming. What I was gonna show you in terms of haul was I went to Joann's and I bought floss. I bought more floss than you can shake a stick at. Yeah, there it all is. <laughs> Actually, there's a few more over here. Um, it was gonna snow. I bought the Barbara Anna Dreaming Girl Sal piece. And of course I didn't have three or four of the flosses and they had a huge sale. Floss was 45 cents a piece. So I went nuts and broke out my app, which told me which um, floss I was out of. And I just sit there, and st stood there and, you know, picked through. I'm hoping that the next time I start a piece in DMC that I will not have to scurry to Joann's. But that does mean I've got a lot of bobbin hitting ahead of me. Yeah, there is that. All right, I'm going to insert some snow pictures for you to enjoy of what the snow looked like around my house. We got, I think I said before, we got 12 inches depending on where you measure. One part of the yard says 12 inches, the other part says 10. I'm declaring we had 11. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna add this to the video. You're gonna watch the snow pictures. I hope you enjoy that. And I will be back in just a moment, okay? Okay, so hopefully the snow pictures got uh, edited in there for you. Uh, Mom and Dad did well during the snow. We do have um, a leak, you know. A, anyway, there's there's a leak in the house that we need that we need to fix. Um, yeah, that's about it. That you know, regular nonsense, different day, right? There's a leak. We have to fix it. We started the conversation with them a little bit about, hey, maybe you want to move to one of those, you know, cool independent living apartments so you don't have to deal with house things, but they aren't so sure that's for them yet. We're working on it. It would be it would be fantastic. We found a really cool place. They've got a beauty salon on site. They have a wonderful organ. They have a choir that you can be a member of, you know, once we get over over the COVID, right? And they have um, a dining room so you can get all three meals a day there. You can eat it there in their beautiful location. You can take it back to your room. Anyway, it would be, I think it would be really great for them, but they're not convinced they like their house. So we're slowly working on that with them. There you go. That's, that's, that's enough of a life update for you. You know, dealing, dealing with and helping elderly parents is not for the faint of heart, as I've said before. All right, you guys, I'm going to let you go. I hope you have a fantastic week. You get you get good stitching done. I'm hoping the same for myself. I want to keep going on my two Whipco pieces. Of course, I want to continue to stitch on my new Owl Forest, and I will let you know what I did um, next time. All right, have a great afternoon or evening or morning whenever I get this edited and uploaded. I will see you later, and you guys, stitch happy. Bye, my friends.